All right, so yesterday we started 5A, which was solving the equations. It's eventually going to get inequalities, but yesterday we just did the equation part of it. So what's the, what's the first goal when I want to solve these? Square root, square root both sides. Good. First, I got to get the square root by itself, right? And then if it's a square root, I'll square both sides. So for number one, your first step would be to do what? Subtract the 7. So I'm going to subtract the 7 from both sides, and I get the square root of 2x plus 4 equals 6. And then I've got the, the square root isolated. So now I can raise it to the power of 2, canceling out the square root on the left-hand side. So I'm going to square this side, square this side. When you square the square root, cancels out. And then 6 squared is 36. Then what? Subtract the 4. 2x equals 32. And divide by 2. x equals 16. Questions so far? So now we know we can check these, right? Like I can take this 16 and I can plug it back in here. 2 times 16 would give me 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6 plus 7. And I get 13 would equal 13. So I know I'm right. And that's my answer. So it's a really good tool to use, especially tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, like when you're taking that little homework assignment and you're doing it in class, when you get an answer, you can immediately plug it back in and check your answer. Another great tool to use on your test. Like when you're doing your homework, unless it's asking for exchange which you don't have to maybe do it every time. But for sure on something that's going to be graded on correctness, like a test, I would definitely take that time to plug them back in and make sure that they're right. Questions on that one? Okay, so then the second one, now you're dealing with a cube root. So this time I've got a cube root on either side, right? What happens if I divide by 3? Does it go away? No, I'm going to end up with a 3 on either side no matter what, which means... I have to do what to both sides? Cube both sides. So on the left, I end up with 3 cubed, which is? Good, 27. And then the cube root and the cube is going to cancel. x plus 4 equals the cube root is going to cancel. 2x minus 17. And then I'm going to distribute... The 27 in, so 27 times x, God bless you, 27x, and then 27 times 4, which yesterday when you discovered I was evil and I wasn't going to give you a calculator, you would have to multiply this out, and I'd get 108. And then I would want to move both x's to the same side, so I'm going to subtract the, 20, the 2x sorry, from the 27. Subtract the 108. So 25x. These could both have the same side signs. So I'm going to add them. Negative 125. And then divide both sides by 25. And how many times does 125 go into, or how many times does 25 go into 125? Five. So negative 5 times. And then again, if I took that and plugged it into check, I'd get 3 times the cube root of negative 5 plus 4 equals the cube root of 2 times negative 5 minus 17. And then complete what's underneath that root. So negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. And what's the cube root of negative 1? What number times itself 3 times gives you negative 1? Negative 1. So this is 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3. And on the right, cube root of negative 10 minus 17. Cube root of negative 27, which is negative 3. So again, checking to make sure that it's right, and I get the right answer. Questions on that one? Okay. And then the last one we can do so far is 3. Okay, so the left side, the square root's already isolated, which means I need to do what to both sides? Square both sides. 
On the left-hand side, the square root is going to cancel out. I get 2x plus 12. And on the right-hand side, I get x plus 2 squared. What do I do there? i got to expand it in FOIL, right? Remember, that's not the same thing as x squared plus 4, right? I've got to actually say that this is x plus 2 times x plus 2. So this would be x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4, or x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then what should you know to do as soon as you see a squared and an, and an x? I'm going to have to factor this eventually, right? As soon as I see the x squared and the x, I know I'm going to have to factor. So I want to get everything to one side. I want to combine the x's together. I want to combine the constants together. So I'm going to move the 2x over here. And then I'm going to subtract the 12. And then I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them together, or sorry, yeah, when I multiply, I get negative 8. And when I add, I get positive 2. What are they? Good, positive 4. Minus. And then I set them each equal to 0. And x would equal negative 4. And x would equal positive 2. And then these are definitely the ones you want to check. So if you end up getting two answers, Usually, odds are one of them's going to cancel out. Not always, okay? But these are definitely the ones you want to check for your extraneous root. So if I take this equation and I plug them back in, square root of 2 times negative 4 plus 12 should equal negative 4 plus 2. So I get the square root of negative 8 plus 12, square root of 4, which is 2. And on the right-hand side, I get negative 2. Does 2 equal negative 2? No, so I'm ruling out the negative 4, and then I'm going to check the positive 2. Square root of 2 times 2 plus 12 equals 2 plus 2. And I get 4 equals 4. So the x equals 2 is the only answer you can keep. Questions on that one, or, or 1, 2, or 3? So the assignment for tomorrow is going to be like one of the, or two, two questions like one, like those. So just make sure that between today, tonight, that you're, you know, you're good to go. Okay, and then we're going to pick up where we left off on 5.8. So 5.8 was radical equations and equalities. Yesterday we got up to example 5 and then we stopped. So this is where we should be. So this says solve with fractional exponents, raise each side to the reciprocal, okay? So the difference between these and what we looked at yesterday is yesterday's all had the root already there, okay? So if I was to write 3 to the 1 third as a radical, what does it look like? The cube root of 3, right? So the 3 would slide over, become the root. So this, be, this would become 5x plus 7 equals the cube root of 3. So now to get rid of that cube root, I would do what? Cube both, both sides. And that's totally written on the wrong side. Hang on. Try that again. So that should, it's the, the one third should be on the left hand side. I'm not going to make you multiply a polynomial three times. Okay. So same process, just on the other side. So this would have been the cube root of 5x plus 7 equals 3. And then to get rid of it, I would have cubed both sides. So the cube and the cube root cancel out. I get 5x plus 7 equals, and then this is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 9 times 3, which is 27. With me so far? Yeah? Okay, then what? Subtract the 7. And divide by 5. So where it 
says raise each side to the reciprocal, the, the point in which you can skip, if you see it, if not, then keep it the way that it is. But if I know that this is one third, the reciprocal of one third is what? Three. So I can raise each side to the third power and skip this step. That's all it is. You're just eliminating one step, okay? But if you don't see it, if it's easier for you to write it as the root first, then go for it. It doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever's going to make you, you know, make it click for you is what you want to stick with. Okay, so then B, now it's raised to the one-half power, and the one-half is the same thing as what? The index would be 2, okay, which would be a square root, or I can skip right to it and raise each side to the second power. So what's 2x times 2x? Good. So there's going to be 2x, two 2's, two which is 4, and then x times x, which is x squared. And then the right-hand side, the square of the square root, 4x plus 8. Watch that equation. You can do quadratic, yeah. Or try to factor it, right? So this, I would move everything to the left side because I like to keep the x squareds positive. This makes life a little bit easier. And then before I even start to factor it by two parentheses, I would look at this and see, is there something I can take out? Good. So make it easier on yourself. Take out the 4, and I'd get x squared minus x minus 2. X minus 1. Good. X, well, other way around, right? X plus 2. Good. X minus 1. And then if I divide by 4, it cancels out. So I can totally ignore this 4. And I'd get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. What do you think you should do with this? Plug it back in to check it. Okay, so I'm going to plug it back into here because I already, I already square rooted it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I said one thing and wrote the other. Thank you. So this should be minus 2 plus 1, and this would be negative 1 plus 2. So now when I check it, I should get 2 times 2 equals the square root of 4 times 2 plus 8. 4 would equal 8 plus 8. 4 would equal the square root of 16, and 4 equals 4. So this one works. And then you want to check the other one. So 2 times negative 1 equals the square root of 4 times negative 1 plus 8. And I get negative 2 equals 2. Is that true? No. Nope. So I eliminate the negative 1 and my only answer is x equals 2. So the 4, yeah, like if I divided both sides by 4, 0 divided by 4 is going to end up being 0. So when I take out a number, I mean, you can kind of skip that step. Like, you know it's going to go away as long as you don't take out a variable. Questions on any of those? So it's just one more step than what we were doing yesterday because it's going to have a fraction. You want to put it into radical form and then go from there. Did you check the second one? I just the oh, I, I checked both. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would check both. But do you always have to or just in case? Yeah, because it could be both. It doesn't always rule it out. It could be none. More often than not, you're just ruling out one of them. But it could, it's possible for it to happen where they both work. Yep? Wait, so if it's none, does that mean you did the wrong one? No, if it's none, there could be no solution, which you probably won't see. Like, they exist, but you're probably not going to see them. More often than not, you guys will see something in which one of them will cancel out. All right, any other questions on where we're at so far? Okay, so the last part of this section is inequalities. And inequalities are your greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to. We solve them just like we do the equations, except the rule with inequalities is if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, what are you supposed to do with that sign? 
flip it. So if it was less than, it becomes greater than, greater than becomes less than. Okay, that's the only difference. And it says, remember, a radical expression with an even index and a negative radicand has no real roots. So if I go to take the square root of a negative 16, there's no real solution there. Okay, that's all. It's just a little reminder. All right, so start with A. The first thing I want to do is isolate that square root. So how do I get the square root on the side by itself? Subtract the 3. Now what? Square the both sides. So 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 36. And then? And the 6. And divide by 2. So instead of getting an x equals answer with these, you should get a range. So any answer equal to 21 or less than 21 would work in this equation. Questions on that one? All right, now B. What do I have to do? Is it isolated already? Yeah. Which means my first step is going to be to do what? Cube both sides. So x plus 2 is greater than or equal to, what's 1 times 1 times 1? 1. Subtract the 2. x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Easy stuff, right? That's not hard. All you're doing is adding the inequality. And you just got to remember... You know, should there have been like a negative 1 on the front of that and I divided both sides and multiplied both sides by negative 1, you just got to remember to switch the sign. That's the only catch with this. All right, questions overall on 5.8. So that wraps up everything that's on your test on Friday. So you've got 5.6, 5.7, and 5.8, okay? So we've got...